Hello and welcome to the program. Today, I'm really honored and blessed to have this wonderful woman in the studio. She's been in ministry for years, and God kickstarted her ministry when she actually prayed for her horse that got really in, badly injured in an accident. And the vet was actually going to put the dog, uh, the, the horse, you know, to sleep. But then God miraculously healed the horse instantly. And that was the beginning of the ministry of this wonderful man of, a woman of God. And she's by the name Dr. Susan Pilens of Susan's Ministries. And they call themselves Step Out in Faith. Welcome to the program, Woman of God. It's good to be here. Praise God. It's been a while, yes. but I got to thank God for your life because I know that God has used you to bless as many as possible across the whole world, especially in Africa and in Asia. I've seen videos upon videos of testimonies. I don't know how you do it because you know I you know I see you just stand there, deliver simple messages. At the end of it all, pray a simple prayer, and Jesus heals them. And I keep wondering, why doesn't he do it like that with everybody? I'm sure well, the Lord can use everybody. It's simple. It's just believing the word of God. But I see some men of God, it doesn't look simple because they pray, they scream, they sweat, they shout, and they're still there. Mm. But you just stand there, simple, talk, and it happens. Yeah, because <laughs> Jesus is alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, on this particular program, I want us to deal with the issue that the, 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 the issue of crowns of thorns to crowns of life. Because you read it in the Bible about crowns, crowns, and you keep wondering, what is this all about? But then when did you yourself start doing a study on this particular subject of crowns well, in the Bible? It all started when I had no bicycles to give to our students in India because we had no money to buy bicycles and the pastor forgot to tell them that there were no bicycles for them this year. But let me lay a foundation to that before you go further because I know initially you were able to raise money yes. to buy bicycles for evangelists Absolutely. in India that you were training to take the gospel to the villages, yes. to plant churches. Then somewhere along the line, the money wasn't coming in. As it well, it wasn't that money wasn't coming in. It was that we had over 20,000 evangelists to buy bicycles for. Ooh. That was the problem. Serious. So um, I came to the Lord with this problem. I said, Lord, what, am I going, what are we going to tell these evangelists tomorrow? Lord, there's not enough money. I need to be a millionaire three times over to buy that many bicycles. <laughs> and I fell into a deep sleep. I was an angel, I was in heaven, and evangelists were all both sides of me. Africa, Indian, Pakistani, from the countries I've worked in. And uh, angels flew in with crowns, and they were finely stitched crowns, not solid gold. And they handed out a crown to each of the evangelists, and I was amazed because some of the poorer evangelists had the better, bigger crowns and they gave me one as well and they all looked to me and thought, right, and what now? Oh yes, we need to go up to the, the uh, altar. great altar of God. And I the lead them throne. up this golden floor. You could see your whole image in the floor wow. and the people are just misted into the distance, there's so many millions. And we came up to the throne of God and they filed both sides of me. And they all looked to me, everyone said, filed around this big, it looked like it was an oval, it may be revolving. Okay. I'm not sure, but. Like a semicircle. Yes, it, the, um, it was about that high, the, it was quite a high, solid gold, of course. And I couldn't see anything above the throne. It was just too bright. I couldn't even look there. It was blindingly bright. Anyway, they're all watching me, and I start to lower the crown. We all kneel down, and we lower the crowns, and suddenly this voice booms out of heaven. These crowns represent your life's 
given for me. I woke up. So the next day, I tell the evangelists the story, what happened. They weren't interested in bicycles anymore. They all stood up and began to praise God. Jesus is worth walking for. Jesus is worth walking for. Jesus is worth walking for. They were going to trust God for their own bicycles, and they did. They knew that every mile we walk is another stitch of gold in the crowns they'd present to Jesus one day. These pastors have their minds right. The following year when I visited them, many of them had bicycles and Hallelujah. some even had motorbikes. And one or two had cars. Hallelujah. They trusted God and God gave them. Brought our ministry to another level. Yes, we still give uh, bicycles to certain very poor people, but the majority of the students trust God for their own wow. bicycles. I think that was God's own way of reaching out to them to say, listen, don't look at man, just look, look on to me. Because yes. it's very easy in the developing world where yes. people are poor to just keep looking at the person who keeps bringing the gifts yes. rather than focusing on God yes. who is able to do far more. Yes. Wonderful. So I learned a lot out of it, and God raised the ministry to another level. Hallelujah. So what's the difference between earthly treasures and heavenly treasures? Well, well, there are earthly tre treasures, and there are worldly treasures. And there are heavenly, heavenly. crowns, and there are worldly crowns, each for God. It says in Matthew 6, 19 to 21, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through to steal. For where your treasure is, so is your heart also. Worldly crowns are for this life. Heavenly crowns are for eternity. The crowns that this world has to offer we need to replace with positive crowns because there's negative crowns and there are positive crowns. And the choice is ours, which crowns we are going to wear. The negative crowns from the kingdom of darkness or worldly crowns that we compete for in sports or the heavenly crowns of eternity. And it says in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 25, Know you not, they that run in the race all run, but only one receives the prize. Yeah. So run that you may obtain. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. For they do it to obtain corruptible crowns, but we the incorruptible. And this speaks of corruptible crowns that we will win in the sport or incorruptible crowns that we will achieve in serving God. Worldly crowns are corruptible, Amen. but heavenly crowns are incorruptible. It says, In Isaiah 28, verse 1, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. These are the crowns of pride. Not a good crown to wear, because pride comes before a fall. That's correct. Wow. But is it possible to lose one's heavenly crown. Yes. In Lamentations 5.16 we read, The crown is fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. And the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 21 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, 
but unto that, those of us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. The crowds of this world, of the proud, of those trusting in worldly things, can all be removed by sickness or age or death, theft or greed. But a far better crown awaits us. And we must put on those positive crowns. The Lord's crowns are not handed to the proud, but to the humble not to the unrepentant, but to the repentant, not to the unrighteous, but to the righteous, not to those who trust in their own ways, but only those that place their full trust in Jesus. Amen. Amen. But then does the crown of thorns that Jesus wore mean anything to us? Oh yes, Mark 15 verse 17 says, And they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it about his head. Little did men know what they were doing, nor the meaning, nor the difference that Christ came to make for man, to deliver man from sin, sickness, and death, and to exchange this for his forgiveness, his healing, and his eternal life. But we see Jesus, says Hebrew 2.9, made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, for he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Wonderful. Wonderful. So what should we do in response to this? We need to repent and put our trust in God. Christ alone is incorruptible, but this is our own free choice. It says in Ephesians 2, 1 to 10, And you, he hath quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath even by other. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love with which he loves us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. For by grace you are saved. And he's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. For by grace you are saved through faith. Not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God pre hath prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. But then what does the Bible teach us about crowns in the Old Testament? Well, Basically, God not only forgave us our sins, but raised us up with himself to sit with him in heavenly places so that we can live victorious lives in him. And it says in Colossians 3, 1 to 4, If then you are risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God, Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then you shall also appear with him in glory. And this is the most glorious promise. 
Crowns spoken in the Old <coughs> Testament are spoken of ornaments of dignity, royal diadems, crowns of victory, conqueror's crowns. And I'll read just a couple of verses. Proverbs 4, 9. She, wisdom, shall give to thy head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver to you. Isaiah 62, 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Crowns also speak prophetically of the victory of Christ on the cross. Isaiah 28, 5. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. And then it goes to speak about the crowns of righteousness. Proverbs 16.31 The hoary head is the crown of glory if be found in the way of righteousness. Or the NIV says, Grey is the crown of splendor if it's attained by a righteous life. Amen. So what does the New Testament say about crowns? Well, Jesus bore the crown of thorns for us on the cross. Thorns of sin, thorns of past hurts, thorns of sickness, and a multitude of other problems. And the Lord has a chain, exchanged those thorns that we should receive from him the crowns of victory because we choose to follow him. And in the New Testament, we read about five crowns, the everlasting crowns. And let's just go on to one, Philippians 4.1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and my crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. That was the crown of joy. And Paul asked in the Thalessians, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are, are we not even in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ as he's coming? That's Thessalonians 2.19. The crown of rejoicing, learning to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Then we can Amen. live out of his love. Wow. So now... And then... Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not only me only, but unto all of those who love his appearing. Amen. And if we love Christ, if we live in righteousness, we will love his appearing. Amen. But if you live in unrighteousness, you will bow in shame at his coming because he is so great. Amen. What about the crown of rejoicing? We've all read, oh, right, yes. So 2 Timothy 4, 8 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. Yes. Not only to me, but all of them that love his appearing. And then the crown of rejoicing is from when 1 Thessalonians 2.19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? Wonderful. Rejoicing in Christ. When we were in Jerusalem last week at the Feast of Tabernacles, yeah. everyone was rejoicing. Hallelujah. What about the crown of glory? 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. And that day when the, we gave that message about the crown of that we laid at the feet of Jesus. Yes. They were not interested in worldly crowns anymore. Hallelujah. They were interested in the soul winner's crown because the Lord has done it all. He forgives our sin and gives us a gift of righteousness. He takes our inadequacies and gives us a gift of the Holy Spirit. 
He gives us the authority of the name of Jesus to do his work. He even gives us of his own love. So how can we do any more than yeah. take our crown and lay it at the feet of Jesus one day? Amen. Then the Bible also talks about the crown of life. What about that? James 1.12 Blessed is a man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to all that love him. What about these last days now, you may ask? Do we fear what's coming on this earth? Even that question is answered in Revelations 2, 10 and 11. Fear none of those things that shall, you shall suffer, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. And you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful even unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He that have ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Man. What more can the Lord do for us? Amen. He's done it all. He bore the crown of thorns and now wears a crown of pure gold, as in Psalm 21, 3. Amen. For thou preventest, goes ahead of him with blessings of goodness and setteth a crown of pure gold on his head. We are, may all have to suffer for Christ, which can also be likened to the crown of thorns. Yeah. But praise him who himself will change that crown of thorns and replace it with his incorrupt, incorruptible crowns, his positive crowns. And all we need to do is thank and praise him. Mm. And I speak to every believer where we have to make a choice. We have a choice to make by the way we choose to live our lives on this earth. We have a choice to lay down the crowns of thorns and put on the crowns of victory, all because of what Jesus has already done on the cross of Calvary. And we have a choice to be average or outstanding if we walk with Hallelujah. God. Wow. This is exciting. This is interesting. We thank God. You know what, to give you a bit more about this ministry and about what God has been doing in this ministry called, the ministry called Suzanne's Ministries. Here's a video to show you some of the works. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can see you there in Boogie. <laughs> Praise God. Well, we thank God for that, that clip. Can you just explain it better? Because they were speaking in their local language. That's in Pakistan. Can you well, explain Well, I'm happened? preaching the word of God in this Pakistani church. There is this Muslim walking past the church on the road, and he heard me say the word of Jesus. And at hearing that word, Jesus, he was instantly healed of emphysema of several years. 
And seeing he was instantly healed, he immediately wanted to come into the church and find out who this Christian Jesus is, this Jesus is, and receive him as Lord and Savior because he was instantly healed. And he came in and received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Wow. I thank God the way the, <laughs> the people erupted into dancing. Oh, yes. We were terrified when we came in because we thought we were all getting into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Glory be to God. Wow. I know you have a ranch in, uh, in Oxford, Stan Lake. Can you just tell us a bit about the ranch? Because I know Christians do come there for retreats. Yes, we run the healing and retreats where people could come for healing or inner healing. We run those every second month at the moment. And we also run a youth camp there and we run all sorts of uh, youth groups, older people's groups. It's a retreat center Amen. and you're welcome to come. And you just phone me up on 044. 18653 triple o double nine. Amen. And I know you have a river that flows past the ranch. Yes. That a lot of different children do love the river. Yes, there's a lake. They um, row on the lake and we baptize people on the lake often. There's a river as well that's a bit further down near the campfire. Okay. Um, it's got quite good facilities and it's a lot of fun and we've also built a tent. Wonderful. And you've written several books, and this particular one says, Dare to Step Out in Faith. Yes. And um, what, can you just well, one sentence. Well, it's a discipleship course. Another one says, Dare to Search for Truth. To buy for your friends that don't believe in Jesus yet. It's a testimony of how I became a Christian. Dare to Enter His Presence. Yes, step by step into the presence of God. And um, Dare to Do Only the Father's Will. That's hearing God and obeying Him. Dare to walk in power, authority, and love. Yes. Amen. <laughs> exactly the Lord bless what it you. says. Thank you so much for coming, and the Lord bless you richly. Really appreciate you. Well, on that note, we want to thank you for being with us, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the program. And if you've been blessed by what you saw, I would like you to just connect with the pastor. They have a website called uh, Susan's Ministries. Dot co dot uk. And if you want to use the Stan Lake Ranch for retreats or whatsoever, get in touch with her. And I want to thank God for her life. God has used her mightily across the whole world. Great and powerful testimonies. Thank you once again and God bless you. I'll be back your way very soon.